everybody. I'm Dustin Bailey, and this is Batman Arkham Knight. The final chapter in the Arkham Trilogy. Uh, we're all just pretending that Origins never happened, right? Okay, good. The final chapter in the Arkham Trilogy, Arkham Knight once again casts you as the Dark Knight Detective as you defend Gotham City from some of its greatest villains. The big bad guy this time around is Scarecrow, who wants to cover the city and the entire eastern seaboard in his patented fear toxin. He's essentially declared war on Gotham, bringing in a private militia to take over along with the titular Arkham Knight, a mysterious figure who seems to have all Batman's gear and moves and naturally is obsessed with killing the Dark Knight. The setup is Superhero 101, but the story's execution is top-notch. It smartly builds on both the previous games and the existing Batman mythos to spin a yarn that consistently pushes the action forward and delivers some thrilling moments. The game doesn't just rely on the grand stakes of its villain's threat, as it often smartly focuses down the drama to core members of Batman's crew, making the danger that follows feel very real and personal. One of the core plot elements, the identity of the Arkham Knight, ends up playing out in an incredibly predictable fashion. But there are a half dozen other moments that took me completely off guard, and the final encounter provides a satisfying conclusion to the Arkham Saga. The core gameplay builds upon that from the previous games. Arkham Asylum's melee combat was an absolute revelation back in 2009. Up until then, the iconic action scene featuring a lone hero fist-fighting dozens of lesser bad guys had never really been well executed in video games. But then here came Rocksteady, a very nearly unknown developer, with a combat system that did it and did it damn near perfect, to the point at which dozens of games have tried to copy the system with varying degrees of success. The punch-punch counter combat is just as satisfying here in Arkham Knight, and while there are a few new gameplay elements, such as environmental takedowns and medics that can revive KO'd enemies, there isn't anything here to shake up an already great system. The same goes for the Predator stealth sequences. While most stealth games tend to make you feel very weak in comparison to your foes, in Batman you strike from the shadows to slowly pick off enemies as their comrades grow more and more terrified of your unseen presence. These sequences, as always, are tons of fun, and do a great job of making you feel powerful against gun-wielding enemies who can actually kill you in just a few seconds. There is a significant new ability in Arkham Knight called the Fear Attack, which allows you to sneak up on groups of foes and take them out in a flurry of quick strikes. This move doesn't fundamentally change how the Predator sequences play out, but it's an impressive ability that only adds to the powerful feeling of controlling the Batman. While these core gameplay elements are pretty much as you remember them from previous games, there is one totally new addition. What are you doing? Evening the odds. This is the first time you've gotten to control the Batmobile in the Arkham series. As you're flying around the city, you can summon the car at any time, and it will find you and pick you up. You can launch out of it, fly over a building, and have it catch you on the other side. You can remotely control it, then drive over to your actual location and automatically pick yourself up. What I'm saying is, it's a very exciting thing to get into and out of. What you do while you're in it, well, it's okay. And I don't mean it's good, I mean it's okay. And in a game that's otherwise as great as Arkham, that's a pretty damning thing to say. As you're driving around the city, at any time, you can pull the left trigger to convert to battle mode, which turns the Batmobile into a tank and turns the game into a slow-moving third-person shooter. You can aim at the turrets of enemy tanks for what amounts to headshots, dodge out of the way of clearly designated enemy firing lines, and build up for various special attacks. If this were a minor piece of the game, it would be a nice way to break up the action. 
the developers at Rocksteady clearly considered vehicular action a third, core pillar to their gameplay, in addition to melee and stealth. And there's just not enough merit to these systems to justify the amount of Batmobile-related content. Turret blocking your path? Better call the Batmobiles. Elevator not working? Batmobiles on the way. Need to power a rooftop generator? It's time to endure an awkward Batmobile platforming sequence. Again, none of these elements are terrible, although there are some vehicular stealth sequences later in the game that are damn near insufferable. This stuff easily makes up a third of the game, and all that time just feels wasted in comparison to the super fun, tight action that makes up the rest of Arkham Knight. The entire time I'm in the Batmobile, I'm thinking about how I could be doing something more engaging, and that serves to make a large chunk of the game feel completely superfluous, which is a major bummer. Arkham Knight builds upon the same open world formula that City introduced, and while I'm more a fan of Asylum's tightly designed Metroidvania style setting, the open world is fun to traverse, and a variety of side activities ensures that Gotham feels alive. The side content avoids the problem typical of games of this type, where you're putting the giant world-ending catastrophe off for days or weeks while you run errands for NPCs, as it makes every situation life or death. Having these quests focus on big-name villains who are making major threats against the city just adds to the desperate atmosphere, and makes the payoff for each quest satisfying in its own right. Of special note are the Riddler's Death Traps, in which you alternate control between Batman and Catwoman to solve puzzles and defeat enemies. These segments are a ton of fun and I wish there were more of them, but unfortunately, half your time with the Riddler is spent dealing with fiddly Batmobile controls and awkward underground racing and car-based puzzle challenges. I'd spend half an hour dying over and over in the Batmobile segments just to get to the next 10 minute challenge room. And that's kind of the thing with Arkham Knight. Half of it is so fantastic, so polished and fun and exciting that it should be one of the best games of this generation yet. It doesn't reinvent the series, but it offers exciting new situations in which to explore the existing gameplay, and tells a dramatic pulp action story that delivers both on years of Batman lore and the specific plot elements of the Arkham games. But then there's the Batmobile. It's weird to hinge your entire opinion of a game on one feature, but there's hours and hours of content here that's just not that great, and I spent every second of those hours wondering when I'd get to the next good part. I was willing to endure those segments because everything else was so good, but endure is not how you should describe a core element of a great game. And Batman Arkham Knight should, by all rights, be called a great game, but the experience is sadly diluted by hours of stuff that's just kinda boring. Hey Batman! I guess Scarecrow gave you the slip! You broke my wrist for nothing! He's got plans for you, Batman! You Now, I wish I could end this review right there, but uh, there's kind of an elephant in the room on this one, and that is the PC version. It's, uh, it's kind of messed up. There are some people out there reporting no issues at all, but for the vast majority of players, they are having serious performance problems even on current gaming PCs. You add to that the fact that the PC version is locked at 30 frames per second, and it's missing a lot of the graphical effects that the uh, console versions have, and the internet is, well, let's just say they're a tad bit upset. So I would tell you not to buy the PC version, but uh, you can't. The response to this release has been so overwhelmingly, utterly negative that the publisher, that's WB Games, has elected to remove the game from sale. And that is a pretty big deal. Uh, they released Mortal Kombat X just a couple of months ago, and the PC version of that game was so completely busted that uh, a lot of people just could not even launch the damn thing. But now, two months later, we've got uh, Batman releasing in a somewhat broken but kind of playable state, and this is the one they decide is not fit for sale. And as far as I can tell, there's only one thing that happened in the intervening time that could have instituted that change of policy, and that is Steam refunds. Now, publishers don't really care about your angry, all-caps posts on the Steam forums. If they've got your money, then they're going to consider that transaction a success. 
And let's be clear here. It's publishers, not developers, that are responsible for decisions like these. Uh, developers, by and large, are just as passionate about games as you and I are, and they want to put out the best product possible. But they are limited in two regards, and those are time and money. And it is the publishers that control their access to those two things. And I can pretty much guarantee you that everybody who actually worked on that Arkham Knight PC port are, at this point, just throwing up their hands, looking at their bosses and saying, I freaking told you so. Uh, I mean, you as a consumer don't have any reason to be concerned about whether it's a developer or a publisher who's responsible for making a decision like this, but uh, don't misplace your anger. Developers are just as angry about this as you are. But now, we've got refunds. And when a publisher like a WB Games sees all those pre-orders and day one sales just evaporate in a matter of hours, that's, that's when a decision maker takes notice and decides that, no, they can't get away with selling games in that state. So if you're unhappy with the condition a game you just bought is in, don't just suffer through it and complain online. Get your money back. That sends a very clear message. If you were interested in the game, but it didn't meet your standards. Your dollars make a statement in a way no angry forum post ever could. Thanks, guys.